Just a quick overview on what I think are the significant differences with the uh, Bernard Binns firmware on the ATS-25. I've been playing around with it for a couple of days now. Uh, apart from the obvious uh, slight difference in the appearance of the screen, for me uh, the major change is the muting, the chuffing when you're tuning on SSB is, is quite a bit reduced. So let's just have a listen to that. I'll just unmute the radio. Oops. And so as we tune through the band, the chuffing has all but disappeared now. Seems to reoccur maybe every five cases, ten cases, I'm not sure. But certainly for general tuning. For general tuning in sideband, I think it sounds a lot better. Um, the other useful change we've got with this is we've got a memory facility which we can actually use. There was some kind of memory facility in the original firmware, but I, I think it had to be written to in the sketch. You couldn't, couldn't enter any memories from the radio itself. Let's go to next and let's go to memo. Uh, you'll see we were on the 20 meter armature band when I started. Now we could, if we find, we'll just scroll down with the dial wheel. And uh, if we find uh, an empty uh, memory slot, number 9 is empty, we can just hit add. And now our 14250 frequency is stored in that memory. Uh, we can uh, just OK that. And then we can scroll up, and if we scroll up to 15.580, and I'll just touch that. There we are on 15.580. And then if we just back out of that, we can tune around. That's great, but can they just practice so, their cooking skills at home? That's another question. As well as useful for storing specific frequencies in memory, we can also use this as a quick way to hop around the bands, particularly because some of the bands in this firmware are set up uh, wrongly. And I'll just give you an example. If we go to the ham bands and we go to, um, let me see, 160 meters. Okay. We'll see that it won't let us tune any higher than... 1910. I'll just mute it because it's uh, all noise otherwise. We've run out of band there at uh, 1.910. We can tune down to uh, 1.8. But certainly in Europe, as far as I know, and I know for a fact in the UK, the band runs from 1.8 to 2.0. So we're missing uh, 90 kilohertz of band here. Okay. Now we can't tune up to that part of band because we can actually just hit the frequency button and uh, we could say um, 1960 for example and OK that and we can, we can tune into that part of the band and, and up we can tune right down but the pre-programmed bands I've noticed uh, with the 49 meter band um, it's a bit too short too small and I think 31 meters similarly if we go to 31 meters and uh, we'll just move that again and I'll tune down and yeah there we go uh, we couldn't go any lower than 9.4 it's quite a few stations uh, WBCQ for one is on 9330 so by selecting the band, you couldn't tune 9330, but you could always go into the frequency uh, key, as I showed you, and type the frequency in. You could enter it into a memory then, and that would make it um, much easier to navigate. But there is an issue with these um, these bands. I'm going to have a look at the sketch when I get time. 
that was certainly with the ATS-20, that was one of the things that was very easy to do, to alter those band limits, even with uh, no Arduino knowledge like I have. Um, but we'll have a look to see if it's the, uh, the, 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 you know, the same process with this. It's slightly different because in terms of the flash and programming, because it's a slightly different device in the radio. Uh, now, other things we've got here that we didn't have with the previous firmware, I think I showed it um, in the earlier video very quickly. We've got this scan, which will actually scan through the band. It's scanning here between 9241 and I think 9560, something like that. And it's picking up any signals it sees. This time of day, there's not much on that um, that part of the spectrum so for a better demonstration let's go back <clears throat> and let's go back to the band dialogue here let's try the 19 meter band 5590 and let's do the same thing here scan and yeah okay we can see see here there's a bit more activity we're going from 15.272 to 15, is that 15.910? Difficult to see, I've got the camera very close to the screen. You can see here it's picking out the activity. And if we just, uh, we, we can pause that, but if we hit the back button, we're just back to the, the frequency we were on, 15.590. Um, there's a screen saver on this radio, so after a predetermined time, the, effectively the screen goes out and you're just left with the um, the frequency readout as a, as a screen saver. Uh, there is the facility for a battery indicator but that doesn't work um, without a hardware modification as far as I know it doesn't work on this radio I think it needs um, needs a hardware mod. There is a way I think of reducing the backlight uh, intensity on the on the radio Again, I think that needs a hardware mod. It doesn't uh, doesn't function in in this one anyway. Um, and I did show you earlier the setup menu. So we've got an option um, to extend the uh, the FM broadcast band. And we've got a few other options we can set. So RDS, digit backlight alters the display slightly. Um, I don't like the effect, so I've left that off. Um, Russian language, obviously, only of use if you speak Russian. The screensaver I've got uh, switched on. And uh, save time in minutes. There we are, it's set there for 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes of use, when you haven't touched the tuning knob or anything on the radio, you get the screensaver. Um, those are to do with the scales. I assume the scale on the scan function. And uh, yeah, battery show. I did uh, try enabling that, but as I say, it doesn't work um, without a hardware modification. So that's a quick summary of um, the differences in the new firmware compared to the old. The original firmware I had on this was the firmware it shipped with. Um, I'll just go back there, go on to band. Um, and uh, there we are, we'll unmute that. This is BBC Radio 4 on Long Wave. Another uncertain thing about Marlowe's presence in the... If I turn the AGC off... ...to contact with the Earls... Listen to that. Total distortion. We'll go up to RTE. In Ireland. RTE 1. A lot of noise, a lot of overload. Hit the AGC. And we've got a signal. I've had a couple of commenters on earlier videos about this radio. One in particular who is, is no longer able to comment on my channel because of what he called me. But because I said this wasn't a very good radio, he was quite annoyed. And he, he, did, uh, he used a term, so I thought, well, you're not going to be able to comment anymore. I don't mind a bit of criticism, and I'm quite happy for people to point out my mistakes, but there's no need to hurl abuse. But if anyone says this is a good radio, and this guy is far better than the um, 
Texan 330 or the um, the Suodon 808 or XHJ 808. Well, look, listen to this. This AGC control is an attenuator. Uh, it was the same in the ATS-20. It doesn't control the uh, the AGC as we know it, which would, would have been useful for switching from um, SSB to CW and so on. The AGC brings in quite a degree of attenuation, and without it... Well, doesn't show any signs of it right now. That's the attenuation in. And you can hear the overload. And the noise we've got when we haven't got to take the AGC out. No, we've got a lot of noise, a lot of breakthrough. The DAGC. The AGC takes it out. This is not a good radio. Um, it's easily overloaded. This is only on a mini whip antenna. It's not, it's not particularly high gain antenna. It's quite good on the lower bands. None of my other radios do that. Not the Texan 330, not the D808, not the uh, Texan 8800 that's uh, actually sitting behind this radio. There's probably a lot of additional circuitry could be designed in this. A lot of extra filtering that's just been missed. This is a reasonable, basic radio, but basically it's a toy. It's fun to play with, and that's about it. If you think this is a good radio, you've never used a good radio. That's what I will say here. It's it's adequate. Please don't pay 140 UK pounds, which I see them on eBay for, because that's massively overpriced. Um, if you can get one a good deal cheaper, and you may well do direct from China, then... Uh, and you like experimenting with Arduinos and uh, sort of, uh, you know, maybe doing some hardware mods, then yeah, it could well be the radio for you. But that was just a little quick overview of the new firmware. If anybody's got any comments or questions on that, I'd be happy to answer. I'll show you the, um, the difference on FM, broadcast FM. The RDS is slightly improved. We'll go into that in a future video. Thank you for watching.